possible and talk about a lot of things that are going on in our community. Things like libraries reopening, and we're talking and we're talking now with the director of the Troy Public Library, Kathy Russ, joins us now on the MegaCast. Thank you for joining us, Kathy. Hi, Tyler. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. How are you? How's your team at the library? Oh, my goodness. We are busy. I just had a meeting this morning with them about um, getting ready. We're all going to be there on Monday um, looking at the building and getting ready to have staff in on Tuesday. So lots to do. So staff on Tuesday, the operations restart on Monday. What are you and your team doing at this moment in time as you prepare to, uh, so to speak, get your books in a row for Monday? <laughs> Uh, well, the first step, most of the libraries in Southeast Michigan, I think it's really important to say this so everybody knows, um, though the governor said that libraries could reopen on Monday, June 8th, um, and we are planning on reopening some services, I don't want anybody to think that the doors are going to be flung wide and that people can come in the way that they could pre-pandemic. Um, our first step at the Troy Library is um, collecting the returns of materials. We have 40,000 items checked out right now, and we need to process, get a handle on processing those before we can do anything else, provide any other service, because that's a lot to do. And we need to focus on that because if we try to do that and provide other service, I don't think we would do anything well. So our first, our, really our first hurdle is getting everybody back in the building and being used to being there and um, understanding what's expected of them, social distancing practices, safety practices, um, increased sanitation practices, a lot of training. Um, so that's the first step. And then we'll take that step and then we'll be on to the next step. So what, what are some of those measures, Kathy Russ, director of the Troy Public Library that are being taken by Troy's Public Library? Uh, maybe some changes to the layout of the library, uh, ways you're enforcing social distancing and encouraging that in the library. What are some new things that are happening that you're training your staff on and will be encouraging the public uh, that they'll be seeing when they arrive at the Troy Library beginning Monday? Well, the first thing that staff will see when they come to the entrances is there are big posters that say, if you're sick, do not come in, go home. <laughs> so that's, that's something that we haven't done before. And we are being very vigilant. Um, we are doing a screening of every employee asking them questions. If anybody appears visibly sick, they have to go home. Um, so once assuming everybody passes the screening process, um, they will receive some PPE. So we have masks for everybody. We have face shields for people who will be serving the public. Um, we have staff have to disinfect their workstation before their shift, after their shift. They can do it during their shift if they want to. Um, just in terms of spacing out employees, you know, if you can picture a, a workspace that has maybe six workstations next to each other. We have to change that in order to respect social distancing. So instead of maybe having six people in a workspace, maybe now we can only have three. So that changes how we're going to do the work because we have to space everybody out. And it might also limit how many people we can have on a shift at a time. And that's, that's definitely going to be a change. If we're limited as to how many people we can bring in, we're limited as to how much work we can get done. So, so there's that. We have different entrances and exits for staff than we used to. Everybody used to be able to come in whatever door they wanted to, but now it's um, very specific. This is your entry point. This is your exit point. Um, and, you know, limits on people, number of people in the break room at any time. Um, you know, things like that that are really going to be, a, I don't want to call it a challenge because I have a great staff, but it's an education. And so you mentioned in terms of staffing, what's going to happen to be checking down, making sure they're, he they're, they're healthy and that they're good to come into the building, not putting anybody on their staff or in the public at risk. In terms of people coming in from the public, Kathy Russ, director of the Troy Public Library with us on the Megacast, what measures are going to be taken for the public as they come in to make sure that, uh, you know, John Smith and, and Jane Doe, who are coming in from, in from inside the community in Troy, are healthy as they come into the library and aren't vice versa infecting people on your staff? Sure, um, that's, and that's a great question. So when we are able to um, have the public back in the building, and that's, that's a little ways away for most of us uh, because we're putting in our, our procedures for the staff and doing some things that we need to do. Um, when we are able to, to let the public in the building, it's probably gonna be um, on a limited capacity the way retail is. Um, there, the governor has provided guidelines in terms of square footage. So, um, so there will probably be someone at the door to say, okay, you have to wait, or people might have to queue in a socially distant fashion outside the building. And when one person leaves, another person can go in. So that's the first thing. The second thing, well, this, there are signs on the door saying, if you're sick, please don't come in. 
Um, we hope people will respect that. We are asking everybody to follow the governor's instructions and wear a mask. Um, some libraries are going to be providing masks to people who come who don't have masks. We will probably be doing something like that. And then um, at least initially, what we want to do is do more of what I would call a grab and go type of library. So instead of coming in and staying for four hours and studying or, or being on the public computers for two hours or really um, you know, browsing like you would in a bookstore for an hour, you come in, you do what you need to do, and you leave. Because again, with the limited capacity, it allows, allows the traffic to flow, allows everybody to get done what they need to get done at the library. We're joined by- And I, I guess I should oh, okay. say, I'm sorry, hand sanitizer everywhere. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's a big one. We get, we just got a whole lot more hand sanitizer here and we have it all over the building. So I definitely understand that from your angle. Kathy Russ, director of the Troy Public Library with us on the Megacast. Kathy, you mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of materials are going to be coming back from the public to the library and, and you have to restock all that and, and see what's still overdue, what still needs to be picked up, get in contact with people. In terms of the actual content itself, the materials, those books, those videos, whatever it may be that people have checked out, what are you and your staff doing to screen that in order to make sure that those materials are safe for the next person and those down the line who will be checking it out? Sure, and that's a, that's a great question. Um, there have been all kinds of studies and you know we've been active and busy in educating ourselves during this quarantine time about what what is the best practice. So what the CDC recommends is that all returned materials are quarantined for 72 hours. So what we at the Troy Library are doing, um, we've opened the drop boxes, we open them Wednesday, um, they are gonna be closed tonight at nine o'clock. Then those materials, everything that was returned, it's in one place, it's in, it's in the, a big room that we've kept the door closed. And um, so those materials will not be touched for 72 hours. So when the drop box is locked tonight at nine o'clock, those materials will stay right where they are, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and then I have staff coming in on Tuesday to process, check in, um, and shelve. You know, well, that's this is going to be a week long process, but um, so we will actively engage with those materials and deal with those materials on Tuesday after those 72 hours have passed for the quarantine. And um, all of the libraries in Southeast Michigan have basically agreed that that's what they're going to do. The CDC doesn't recommend that we do any more than that. They say 72 hours should kill any virus that's alive. And you have to be careful with library materials because if you treat them with chemicals, it could ruin them. So we right. just want to make sure that they're safe, but we don't want to hurt them in any way. Yeah, it's gonna be a process and some people are gonna just have to be patient with materials that they've seen have been checked out for a while. They've been eagerly waiting to get that book the second the library comes back up and, and opens again. But it may be a waiting process, but it's it's definitely for, uh, for the right reasons and for a good cause. In terms of library programming, uh, the, as these organizations and municipalities reopen af as we come out of this coronavirus pandemic slowly but surely, uh, some programs are going to be back right away and they're going to have social distancing measures and probably entail less population at these events. In terms of the library events and the library uh, programs that will be back immediately versus waiting a little bit of time, what are some programs that people can expect to be able to re-engage in right away at the Troy Public Library and those that may be waiting a while? Well, our summer, our summer reading program is going to be online this year. Um, usually we start in June and we have this big kickoff that we usually get a couple thousand people to attend. Um, that's unfortunately not going to happen. Likewise, at the summer reading program conclusion in August, we have another big event and we usually get a couple thousand people and we just, just can't, it's not safe to do that. Um, you know, we want to follow the, the governor's rules that, you know, no more than a hundred people um, in, in an outdoor setting and no more than 10, you know, in, inside the building. So, um, so our summer library program is online this year. And our programming, virtually, um, virtual programming through Labor Day, for sure. Um, after Labor Day, it kind of remains to be seen how things look in the world, any changes to any guidelines. But for the moment, because um, Troy is such a large community, there are 80,000 people who are in Troy. And when we have in-person programs historically, you know, we usually get anywhere between 50 and, you know, we've had one program in the wintertime called Winter Wonderland that attracts 5,000 people. And so we, we don't want to put something out there that could potentially be unsafe. So we're just going to go with virtual through Labor Day, and then we're going to see where we are. And have those virtual programs that you have had in place uh, 
has this process going through the COVID-19 pandemic and a lot of places having to switch to entirely virtual programming, especially most notably schools, has this process helped the library maybe transition to some more virtual programs that will continue mm -hmm. on into the, to the future? What have you learned as a library, as a Tory Public Library during this process while you haven't had people in the physical brick and mortar library? Oh, that's, that is a really great question. Um, I'm glad you asked that. Well, I think so much is about promotion. Um, I think, especially as the, as the quarantine went on, people were really hungry for something to do. So as, as much PR and contact and, and communication that we could have with our, our residents, um, you know, we have an e-newsletter, we have our, um, our website, we have social media and so forth, um, and, and things that spoke to the appetite. So as spring came, we had a program called Bees in the Bee about um, urban bee keepers and gardens and that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, we talked to them. And, and it, got, um, it got over 50 people, which for a virtual program is really good because in March when we did our first virtual program, I think we had 15. So, um, so I think as time went on, people really were looking for those types of, of things to do. We've had virtual book groups. We've had um, a cabin fever reading challenge. We had a, a virtual cookbook club that was sharing recipes and cooking their way through a cookbook. Um, and, and as, especially, like I said, as time went on, people became a lot more interested in, in those sorts of things and engaged. So what we've seen is people engaging more with technology and we've had librarians available to do virtual reference to help people, you know, how do I use Zoom? How do I download books to a Kindle? You know, and so I think that you'll see as time goes on, people will continue to engage digitally. I think everybody will be glad to be back in person, but they're not going to lose that new skill that they found with digital. You also have a, a millage coming up in, Tro in Troy for the library. Yes, we we, we, that was mentioned to me by Captain Jeff, our, our producer. <laughs> We're speaking with Kathy Russ, by the way. Kathy Russ from the Troy Public Library. She's the director of the Troy Public Library on the Oakland County Megacast. So, Kathy, that millage is coming up. When is it being voted for? And what, what are some of the programs that are going to be impacted at the library? Or how will those funds, if it is passed uh, or not passed, be utilized by the Troy Public Library? Well, our current, the current millage um, expires on June 30th of 2021. So we're, um, our fiscal, the library's fiscal year starts July 1st. So we're finishing up the fourth year of our millage and we're going into the fifth and final year of the millage. So we have a meeting with city council on this coming Monday night to talk about exactly those things. Um, you know, what, what seems appropriate um, going forward. The election is in November um, of this year. So we will establish what the millage rate should be. And um, I don't think necessarily that that will happen on Monday, but we're, we're getting the conversation started. And I expect all summer we'll be, we'll be working on that. Well, that's good to hear. And it's good to hear that the Troy Public Library is planning to reopen on this coming Monday. Staff will be yeah. back in full on Tuesday this week. So we're looking forward to that. I know that Kathy Russ and her team at the Troy Public Library are looking forward to that. We just got another couple minutes left with you, Kathy. Is there anything else that you'd like to say or anything else we haven't maybe spoken on that you believe is important before I let you go? Thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate that. So um, just to mention what, what most libraries are doing um, is next week, the week of June 8th, we'll have um, staff in the building. And again, getting, getting the staff ready, getting them educated, getting them an understanding of what's expected and starting to process that volume of, of return materials. Many of us have in the multiple thousands of, return, of, of items that are checked out. Then which I think you'll see the week of June 15th is many of us are planning on a curbside pickup service. So patrons can call in, place items on hold, drive up, we'll run their materials out to them and off they go. And I think that that will continue for a, a, a couple of weeks just um, as we all get used to being back and providing service and, and get the buildings ready to welcome the public back. We will have librarians available to help. Like if you, you, know, you don't know what you wanna read and you're used to coming to the library to browse, you know, you're not able to do that. We can help you find some things and get them to you. So, um, so the first phase is checking in all those returns. Second phase is curbside pickup. And then I think phase three, we will be able to let patrons into the building in a limited capacity, again, based on building capacity, what the governor is requiring us to do and how we're supposed to limit. And then eventually, hopefully soon, um, you know, business as usual. I think that that's, you know, I'd love to see it happen this summer. Um, I think we have to see how things are going. But so what I ask the everybody is just um, understand that we are doing things incrementally to keep 
you safe to keep us safe and to make sure that we do it right because I don't think any of my colleagues library directors believe in offering half-hearted service or, or doing many things not well. I think we'd rather do one or two things really, really, really well and get that down and then proceed from there. So please be patient with us. Um, we are delighted to come back and serve you and um, looking forward to seeing everybody again. Yeah, patience is going to be key with a lot of these businesses and community organizations and definitely municipal services that are reopening as we slowly but surely emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. Kathy Russ, the director of the Troy Public Library.